President Obama's Iran deal seems to be on the brink of death. Today, President Trump announced his administration believes Iran is violating that deal. He says he'll cancel it outright if Congress doesn't strengthen it. I am directing my administration to work closely with Congress and our allies to address the deal's many serious flaws so that the Iranian regime can never threaten the world with nuclear weapons. In the event we are not able to reach a solution working with Congress and our allies, then the agreement will be terminated. Doug McGregor is a retired colonel. He's now executive vice president at Burke McGregor Group. He's the author of the book Margin of Victory, Five Battles That Changed the Face of Modern War. Colonel McGregor, thanks for, for coming on. Sure. Uh, what does this mean and where is it going from here? Look, uh, this is a very curious case. I haven't figured out how we benefit from decertifying the Iranian agreement and then potentially sliding into a conflict with Iran. Because if we decertify Iran, the Senate will probably pass sanctions. Sanctions will be treated as an act of war by Iran. The Iranians will then say we have no further incentive to cooperate. They will double down on building nuclear warheads. They will probably get assistance this time from the Russians. We will inevitably collide with them militarily somewhere in the Gulf, in the Indian Ocean, or on the ground, where we have very light, vulnerable forces right now in Iraq. And Iraq is effectively an Iranian ally. It's a Shiite Arab state. Right. So you put all of this together and you have to ask yourself, what are we doing? How does this make sense? How do we benefit from this? Because we don't want a wider war. And clearly, candidate Trump made it very clear that he did not want to widen any wars. He wanted to gradually disengage. So what would be the point of this then? How did this happen? I, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense strategically. This is, the timing is terrible. Our forces are spread very thinly around the globe. We have very light forces on the ground entirely dependent upon air power for survival. If they are taken under direct assault by the Iranians, supported by the Russians, they're in a lot of trouble and we would have a great deal of difficulty getting them out of there alive. We could easily be embarrassed is the bottom line. It would take us a very long time to assemble any troops to go in there. And the notion that somehow or another with bombing or missiles we are going to subjugate Iran or bring it around is, is simple nonsense because they will be backed by Russia. So th those strategies have no chance of success. I wish frankly speaking that we would back away and, and rethink this whole thing because I think the timing is terrible. This is not the time to do anything like this and frankly the Iranians are not going to renegotiate this thing. It took a long time to get it. Plus our allies, our friends, everyone else in the world does not see Iran in the same light as we do in Washington or as Israel does. Uh, they see the, the Sunni Arabs and the Sunni Turks, the Islamists in uh, Ankara, the Islamists in Saudi Arabia and in the Middle East as far, far more dangerous and hostile to Christians and Jews in the West than Iran. Yeah. Well, look at the body count. It proves that point. Yes. Colonel, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it.